So the project you're working on now deals with taking a celebrity or possibly even a self-portrait and stylizing it. The closest thing that's out there for your reference would be stills from the movie A Scanner Darkly. Um, and I say closest because it's not exactly what we're doing. This image here is probably a good example, close to what, very close to what we're doing. Um, you see that the outlines here around Keanu's face, there's, there's some definite variation to them. Um, they did a nice job of you know, showing the five o'clock shadow without going too crazy. Um, but not necessarily every image for the movie is a great example. Uh, you have to remember these were done with uh, computers um, and then you know a little bit of human touch up along the way. So some of them uh, did not come out as great as others. So this, for example, might not be as good of an example because it looks like the stroke around his face is really uniform and, and down here. So it looks like a stroke, whereas the other one we looked at looked like something that you would have to draw yourself, both sides of it with the pen tool. Also, even the coloring here is, is pretty simple, not as realistic as this example. So I'm going to make one along with you so that I can emphasize uh, what I think you should be going for so that you show off your skills with the pen tool. Um, we don't want it to look photorealistic. If we did, we just use the photograph or if we wanted to make it uh, you know, somewhat photorealistic but use our own tools, we'd use the gradient mesh tool so we blend all these colors together. We don't want to do that either. And if we wanted it photorealistic, we definitely wouldn't be using this heavy use of black line. So it truly is stylistic. Okay, so let's talk about just getting started setting up the, the document. One thing that I need to really emphasize here is that when you save your work, at the end of the day, you save the entire folder because you'll have an Illustrator file and you'll also have some placed images. Um, it, it's more of the professional practice of just linking the images rather than embedding them, and I'll talk about that more as we do it. Uh, but the assumption right here would be that you know one of your final sizes but are not concerned with setting it up yet. Like for example, if someone told you uh, I need a uh, 8 by 10 out of this, then you're just going to kind of keep that in the back of your mind and uh, later on we'll actually set that up. But the reason I just want you to keep it in the back of your mind is the image that you find or that you're going to use isn't necessarily going to be your composition. So you don't really want to limit yourself to a composition and say, yeah, that's exactly where the image is going to be placed because you may end up doing something interesting with the background that would change that. Um, the other assumption is that you know that you'll be printing at least one print as big as you can go, which might be 13 by 19 or might be 11 by 17. Um, and the last thing is that you found an image uh, of yourself if you're doing a self-portrait or of a celebrity that measures 900 or more pixels in each direction. So let's go ahead, fire up Illustrator. We're going to do File, New. And so let's just say that the size you were going with is the 13 by 19. You may or not be able to pick it from the drop down here. And uh, even if you could, some you have to figure out which one it is because it's most likely going to be often referred to as, as Super A, sometimes Super B, depending on the computer you're at. But you can just simply type in the numbers here. You know, Make sure you're on inches for ease here and just type in 13 by 19. If you're doing it horizontal scape, which sometimes if someone has their arm out or something like that, then instead it would be 13 by 19. Don't have to worry about the bleed for this and we are just going to click on OK. We get our one artboard here and then we are going to go up to file and place and we're going to hunt to the celebrity image that we found and we're going to go ahead and right click on it and place it. Once we click place, we get the loaded cursor and the image comes in. Now I'm actually going to 
backtrack that one step here. I'm just going to Command Z to unplace that because something that you may want to do if you figure or feel that that image that you have looks like it would be difficult to trace as is, what we can do is open that image up in Photoshop and make a couple changes to it save it out as a PSD and then you'll end up placing the PSD file. So let's say for example that you didn't think there was enough whites in the image. So one thing that you can do is play around with the levels in here. So we never want to destroy any pixels or make any permanent changes. If we do that, um, if we feel a need to do something that does that, we'll simply make a copy of the layer. But for now, before we get to anything like that, we'll just click on this little icon here for Create New Fill or Adjustment Layer, and we'll go to Levels. And we can click Auto just to see what that does. It doesn't do much in this image because it's actually a pretty good image. It, the darks are very dark. The lights are very light. But just let's say, for example, that you did feel like you needed to to bring things in a bit to really beef up the contrast. You could slide this slider over here and what that does is it makes things pretty cut and dry like a lot of things become black and then you can slide in this way and a lot of things become white. So if you went to the extreme on this you'd end up with a picture that like either has blacks or whites in it. Now that obviously isn't any help to us so you'll have to play with these sliders on your image to see if that helps you. Um, I'm actually quite satisfied with mine right now, but let's just pretend I made a couple tweaks here. Um, so this layer right here then applies to the image and the beautif beautiful thing about it, in fact let me just go up in here and, and make a couple more um, changes to this. Um, I'll just kind of, I'll grab this middle slider and that will let you go more towards lights or darks. And actually, maybe this will help me a little bit here, just going that way just a bit. This is just to bring out the uh, the wrinkles for me right now, the, the black lines. So let's say that um, you're happy with that. Now you'd go ahead and save it as a PSD, but I, I just want to show you something that any changes that we made here, we can get rid of as simple as by clicking this eyeball. So they're applied to the image, they're not applied to the image. So I'm going to back that off just a bit here. Okay. And then we're going to go File, Save As. We want to save as the native PSD format. So under Format, make sure you, you drop down and you select Photoshop. And then I'll just call this Clint adjusted, save it as a PSD, make sure that it goes in the same folder, click save. Now we're going to go back to Illustrator. We've created the document, now we're going to place that image. So file, place. Now notice your options that you have here. We do want this to be, well at first we have to click on it, we do want it to be a link. We're not going to use it as a template in this case. Uh, we'll click Show Import Options. I don't think that's going to be at. Yeah, there's none for this. And then we're just going to go up here, click the image, put it in here. Now, it just so happens that my image fits pretty nicely in this environment. Some of you may have huge, huge images, in which case what you'll want to do is just take this uh, direct selection tool, bring it down to a corner of the image. Your cursor will change to a double arrow. You want to hold down the shift key and you'll just move in until you get the image the size that you want. You'll release the mouse first and then the shift key. The reason I emphasize that is if you release the shift key too soon, you could end up without even knowing that you did this. I'll kind of fake it here. I'll release the shift key first and then the mouse. Now there it's obvious that we stretched old Clint, but um, sometimes it's not so obvious and you end up putting hours and hours in your work and then someone looks at it and goes, oh, something seems off about it. So if you ever think you made a mistake like that, just Command Z, 
put it back the way that it was. So I'm happy with him here. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to lock this layer. Uh, again, we're not going to be concerned about cropping this. You know, even if the image format that you're going for is a lot different than what you have, just start building from the inside out. You know, areas that you know for sure will be kept in the final image. And then you may discover something along the way that you say, oh no, you know, I'd actually, in the end, let me just give you an example here so it's clear what I'm talking about. Let's just say that our final size was going to be 8 by 10. And I'll get rid of the fill on that. So if it was going to be an 8 by 10, the actual size doesn't matter so much on the 8 by 10 as the proportions. So always better to work big. So I'm just going to shift click on the corner here. And so now I know about how much of this final image I could put in here. But let's say something really interesting starts happening with the background and you decide that your final image might look more like something like this. I'm just going to unclick the background here and there might be a big emphasis on putting him in the corner because you want to put something else over here. Who knows? List the title of his movies, put uh, you know something that he's famous for over here, even put in another celebrity that he might not normally be seen with. Who knows? Just we don't want to limit ourselves yet. So uh, don't worry about making that 10 by 10 box. Just get your celebrity in here, lock the background, and now you are ready to draw. So step number one of this process is to put in the blacks. So that's the stylistic black lines in here that look painterly, like a painter stroke, not like a stroke that's made in Illustrator. So we will not be using any actual strokes. Everything that we make will be a, well, let me just give you an, an example here. I'll just pretend like I'm making a very big outline of the edge of his face here. And I'll, I'll make it off of his face just so you can see clearly what I'm doing here. But instead of it being a stroke, it's actually going to be a path that we control. And then if I flip flop the fill and stroke, you can see here that in no way does that look like something that was made with just a stroke. It has variants in it that we control. Nothing in here should be accidental. One thing that I overlooked that's pretty easy to fix, uh, if you're just writing down the instructions for this, um, just know that when you went file, new here's what I should have told you but I'll show you a way to fix it if you didn't do it um, we're working with a print based document basically so if you had this set to print everything would be perfect here except we would want to change this to inches and then set up our 13 19 and then under advanced we just want to make sure that the color mode is CMYK that raster effects is set to 300 um, which both of these are typically the defaults. Um, if you're not sure about the color mode and you've already set it up, you can just go to File and you can go to Document Color Mode and just make sure that, that CMYK is checked. So at this point, you're just going to start drawing in the black lines. So where you would put the thicker black lines would be along shadow areas. So like here is a good place. Uh, any wrinkles? So let me just start here next to the eye. There's like three really good ones here. And keep in mind we're going stylistic. So I may not have to draw in every one of these, especially these lighter ones. But these three right here for sure. I mean they almost look like they're, they're just ready for me. So make sure our background layer is locked. We're on the blacks layer. Whenever I draw a, uh, a path, I always want to make sure that I have only a stroke set, even though we're going to soon change that. I want to go over to the stroke panel, and I want to change this to the smallest stroke I can make, just to kind of keep it out of my way. 
and then I want to be zoomed in here as close as I can. 